Good evening, Mr. Prabhu. Thanks for joining. Good evening. Good evening. So, Prabhu, we have uh, all the members, majority of the members from our society, uh, you know, eager to listen to you as to what you have to guide us, uh, oh. learn about selfie development. Yes. Can you give me some details about your uh, uh, building and history and how you have come to this stage when you have uh, spoken to me, which you told me earlier? We have done repair two times in the last 33 years. Okay. And this is the third time we had to do because there is a massive uh, repair we just expected to do. So, but we collectively decided that we don't have to do the repair. Let us try out the redevelopment option if it is feasible. Okay. We started. And yeah, go ahead. How many members? Total 56 members are there. Okay. And how much land is there with you? So 1390 square meter. Okay. 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 And what is the width of the road that is abutting your. Uh, it's more 18 meter. Okay. More than 18 meter. Yeah. Okay. So that's fine. So all the conditions for redevelopment are being fulfilled and there is no... What about your earlier, this thing, earlier efforts to towards redevelopment? So we also want to do the deem convince because our builder already approached us, but he is not giving the future FSI. So there are some conditions. So we no, he cannot, he is not entitled to keep future FSI with him under any law. So if he doesn't give it, no sense in going to him. Uh, the best way is to go for deal. Conveyance will take about two to three months. For order, it is six months, correct? Yeah, but sometimes we can make it earlier. Within three months, we can uh, push it also. But six months, definitely everything will be done. Problem is for deal conveyance, the uh, registrar has to issue a notice to the owner that's yeah. the builder and the builder generally is given three to five uh, adjournments mm -hmm. so if he takes adjournment three times then three months are gone and that he will not reply to the notice given by the registrar then when he finally comes then the registrar will take action or if he doesn't come then it will be ex parte that is without him the decision will be taken so in any case entire uh, thing may take three to five months uh, at the outer limit six months i don't think you have to appoint anybody mm -hmm. Convenience requires five or six uh, things one is your property card second is uh, 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 your agreements with the builder or with the earlier person the agreements with them also the approved plan of the building uh, uh, then the map layout map the map of your uh, plot and the uh, 712 extract or something whatever you have so these documents which are already there with you you have to make copies and submit it to the registrar the registrar will then if he finds any portion of uh, the documents missing or wanting, he will ask you. If you have those documents, you have to submit those documents. If you don't have those documents, there is a provision that you have to uh, sign an affidavit saying that this document which is being asked from us is not there in the records of the society for whatever reason. However, the society takes responsibility for any consequences of this document being found at a later date and if there are any compliances that are left on behalf of the society due to non-submitting of this document, we are willing to take the responsibility of that at any stage. So once you do that, then all your documentation is done. For that, no sense in paying 10,000, 20,000 or 30,000 to some middleman who will go there and only negotiate uh, with the concerned officer for some bribes. We do not want to pay bribes. There should be, there, uh, you do not need to pay any bribes to get the deemed conveyance done. The deemed conveyance can be done in the normal fashion. If you find any obstacles in that, you have to bring the registrar, whoever is your DDR, his telephone numbers, and I will call him and I will speak to him and we will see that it is done. 
first on on deep convenience if anyone has any questions please uh, go ahead and ask the questions on deep convenience then we will go for reader uh, sir i have one question for, yes uh, yes we have i think two or three agreements they have not paid the stamp duty and registration because they have taken the flat from the directly builder and we have already collected agreement copy from each and every one and we have the latest agreement copy not the chain of agreement the latest one so is it any anybody who has to make some payment with regard to stamp duty or registration charges or whatever that is that will have to be done without that they will not give the deemed conveyance to you and so that you will have to check of course the registrar will tell you whoever is uh, found uh, uh, lacking in a particular document which you do not have earlier the system was a bit difficult wherein you would have to submit the chain of agreements from the person who was the original lorty whom the builder sold till today if there were six times the flags would have changed then you would have had to give uh, evidence of all the six transactions now that has been removed now whoever is the present occupant whoever he has bought uh, with if he has paid the stamp duty and this thing when that and uh, uh, registration when that uh, transaction happened then he doesn't have to pay any more money but if there is someone who is not fulfilled those conditions that are required he may have to fulfill those conditions okay and how about the index 2 because out of 56 uh, there are i think 15 flats who do not have index 2 copy so do we need to get it no for uh, uh, for your conveyance generally index 2 is was earlier required but presently they are relaxing the condition of index 2 i do not know in mumbai they are not insisting on index 2 anymore if you have it is always helpful if it is not then they can recreate the index to but if they insist it in thane we may have to make some arrangement for index to or if it is not there submit individual affidavits that we do not have the index to you really don't have to go through any middleman for the conveyance and you don't really have to pay anything under the table for the conveyance because middlemen are the one who create this under the table thing because middleman also gets some portion of the money that you pay under the table and his work is simple he just has to go to the concerned person and say tere ko itna dega mere ko itna milega and then flees the society we uh, don't encourage that at least i have done more than 400 uh, uh, 60 conveyances in mumbai in none of them we have Uh, appointed any middleman neither have we paid any money under under the table for the conveyance and conveyance has been done we have had no issues whatsoever wherever there were issues we have uh, i had to speak to the concerned officer and once he came to know that i am in the picture then uh, you know his language would change so uh, uh, i don't see any problem in that what we have done in mumbai we can continue the same in thane as well so i do not think there would be any issues with regard to conveyance uh, but that 5 or 6 months period will have to be spent so that 5 or 6 months period we can do other things to get your society ready for uh, uh, you know for the uh, redevelopment program is that Uh, clear any other query so there's one question i had yes yeah i had one question can you hear me yeah uh, after yes. this uh, once we have this deemed conveyance from the registrar side uh, are there any other formalities also uh, with the yeah, yeah, there is, after the after the registrar gives a conveyance then you have to get a due certificate so that is when the stamp duty registration all those charges come in. so uh, uh, all that will have to be done sometimes it may even go for adjudication with regard to some payments if you have to make and they will adjudicate and say look 
this is this flat has to face this much payment whatever needs to be done and that has to be cleared and then the conveyance is done okay see redevelopment very simply can be uh, done in uh, two ways first is the conventional way which everyone knows by which you go to a developer you appoint a pmc and the pmc is then give you what they feel is the feasibility report and then uh, you go further and you appoint uh, with the, in consultation with the pmc you appoint uh, you invite developers to come and bid for your uh, thing the developers uh, give you various bids out of which you select one developer and appoint the developer that is the developers model which uh, has be, is being uh, normally followed all over in mumbai thane and rest of the state of maharashtra now uh, the problem with the developers model is very simple the developer uh, uh, the uh, developers model has resulted in a lot of people being uh, 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 you know being rendered homeless because in mumbai alone uh, 5800 projects have been stuck and why are they stuck because the developer uh, uh, promises the world and then first he gives you some rent and makes you go out of the building and then he demolishes the building he gives you some rent and later on he realizes that his flats are not selling or that he has uh, you know he has spread himself too thin or that the market is not good or that the real estate is not as good as it is expected to be or that his permissions are not forthcoming for reasons best known to him and then he stops paying the rent so in mumbai alone in this 500 800 projects we have 1,75,926 or families which means about 8 lakh people who took rent left their buildings the buildings have been demolished now their rents are stopped and they do not know where to go most developers whether in mumbai or in thane other than those who are connected with the political people because for the political people the money comes from the bribes and it it doesn't come from official business so uh, uh, are completely bankrupt the uh, all the banks put together the nationalized and private banks in india have together lent 6 lakh 80000 crores to developers and the developers are in no way uh, going to pay this money because their inventory is increasing and the flats are not selling the same is case is the case in thane the same is the case in panvel the same is in the case in vasai virar and meera road in uh uh dombivili kalyan dombivili binder and other places so as a result of that going to a developers model has become uh, not just risky but it has it, it would really dishouse people and the chance of you are getting your house not within the given period but forever is uh, in doubt so in order to overcome that an alternate model was worked out the alternate model came from the earlier uh, models which uh, uh, in which mumbai thane and others grew in from 1910 downwards till the till the community of builders came into being in the 70s and the 80s wherein a society got together uh, from some company or some people some community some relatives they went to the land owner bought the land called an architect made the design took loans from financial institution and built the building that was the conventional self development model in which 80% of mumbai's buildings have come up only through self development in the middle you know we started got used to instant tea instant coffee instant noodles and so instant building you know we became lazy we had more money and we wanted other people to do our work and so uh, the builders came into being initially they started as people who would give us service and at a later stage they became bosses wherein they 
virtually controlled the whole city all the time. They bribed the politicians, then the politicians became uh, builders, and now the builders have become politicians. So, in every political party, there are builders, and every political party has its share of builders. And as a result, the uh, gains from self uh, from the redevelopment schemes, which should go to the members of the cooperative housing society, actually go to the middlemen. And the cooperative housing society really doesn't get what is legitimately due to it. And due to this, the new model came in. And today, the new model has been successfully implemented in Mumbai. And in the rest of the state, uh, including Tane, there are quite a few cooperative housing societies which are coming forward and uh, uh, implementing this uh, model. Now, uh, how does the uh, to understand the um, the difference between the builders model and uh, uh, the cooperative housing society's model you must understand i mean you must uh, remove some misunderstandings which we have been having over a period of years and those misunderstandings are simple and they are there in doctors engineers qualified people you know who consider themselves well educated still have these misunderstandings because as far as redevelopment is concerned they are either illiterate or semi-literate but because you have a qualification you feel you know everything and that is how you get stuck and uh, you really uh, fail to get the best out of the land on which you are living so the first misunderstanding is that the builder builds the building no builder builds building the person who builds the building is called a contractor so the builder is not responsible for building the building. So if you need someone to build the building, you need a good contractor, not a builder. So for building a building, you don't have to go to a builder. You have to go to a contractor. So a builder doesn't build a building. Uh, misunderstanding number one to be removed. Second misunderstanding is builder puts in his money uh, in the project and implements the project. Completely wrong. No builder puts in his own money into the project. Every builder takes consent from you, takes power of attorney from you. And once he gets the power of attorney, he pawns off your land in the market and raises funds from money lenders for the project. So the money comes from those who lend the money and not from the builder. So the second misunderstanding that builder puts in his own money in the project, if at all is there, should be removed because no, no builder puts in his own money, the money comes from the market. I mean, whether it is from money lender, whether it's from uh, uh, investors, whether it's from the politicians, whether it is from the venture capital fund, whether it is from the foreign direct investment, whether it's from the foreign institutional investors, whether it's from the high net worth individuals, whether it is from IPO or uh, whether it is from the NBFCs or whether it is from the housing finance companies. All these are avenues through which builder raises the funds. Now, all these avenues are also open to cooperative housing societies. Those who lend to the builders are willing to lend to the cooperative housing society as well. So the cooperative housing society can get funds from all these organizations that I have mentioned earlier, and they can lend to you also. So just because you do not have money and you feel that the builder has money and that he's putting his money to go to a builder, that uh, misunderstanding should be removed because builder doesn't put in money and he takes money from those people. The same people are willing to give you money. So you don't have to go to a builder to raise the funds. You have to go to those organizations who fund the builders and they will put funds with you also. So second misunderstanding is one. Third misunderstanding is that uh, you know, if you go to a builder, then your uh, quality of pl planning, designing, and quality of construction is good, which is again a myth. Uh, I have been uh, teaching in Mumbai University for over 35 years, setting the papers of building economics, architectural design, uh, 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 urban planning, urban design, and all these subjects which I have been teaching for over 30, 35 years. And I can tell you with confidence that the kind of planning that builder gives, if some of my students will give that kind of planning, we would give him less than passing marks. So 
the planning that builder does is a planning by which he is entitled to get the maximum uh, money out of the property and it uh, need not necessarily be good planning from the academic point of view so builder does a good plan if someone feels it's his ignorance which uh, uh, reflects the planning that the builders give in normal buildings is not good and uh, in self redevelopment you can get the best architects to give the best of plans so that's the third misunderstanding that good planning and good quality construction quality construction the lesser said the better even in mumbai we have found that 97% of the buildings built by builders for the original residents their quality is leaves much to be desired when a quality uh, construction is expected even b is not given mostly it is c c plus c minus and so on so the quality of construction if someone feels that by going to a builder uh, it is uh, a, a good quality of construction they are mistaken because initially the paints and all that on the building look very attractive in 3 or 4 years time by the time the building starts speaking to you means it start leaking or the real building is known to you the builder has sold his flats and he is already out so you cannot file a case against him because the company through which he has developed your property has already been wound up so you cannot really uh, find fault with the, with the builders and hence the misunderstanding that the quality of construction given by builder is good uh, needs to be removed from you and the last misunderstanding is that Uh, you know that the moment builder comes all the uh, all the permissions come automatically you know uh, believe me you, no builder goes to any municipal authorities or any government office to get permission for builders there are people who do the liaisoning work they are the ones who get the permissions so if a liaisoning person for a builder gets permission for the builder the same liaisoning person can get permission for you so uh, thinking that builder can get permission and because builder gets permission we should go to builders that is completely wrong the same people who liaison for the builder will liaison with you and get you the permission the only difference between the builder's permissions and our permission is that uh, the liaison person who does the work for us we will not pay him anything in advance and we will pay him only on completion of uh, uh, the milestone that is once the permission comes then we will pay him as has been agreed for liaisoning so architectural design is different liaisoning is different certain budget will have to be set aside for liaisoning there is no cash to be given to anybody there is no cash to be accepted out of the any sale of buildings so uh, uh, the conception the misconception that builder gets permission very fast on the contrary the builder's permission takes more time than self development schemes so uh, that misunderstanding also needs to be removed from your mind so once you have removed all these misunderstandings and of course the misunderstanding that builder gives uh, uh, the delivery of flats on time i do not remember any builder who has said that he will complete the project in 2 years has completed it in 5 years or 8 years or 10 years so builder takes so much so many years for the work and then stop the payment of the rents and the members of the society are put to uh, innumerable uh, uh, difficulties and hence uh, these are the misunderstanding that need to be removed the self free development is the same as the builder the funding comes from those agencies which would have otherwise funded the builders the uh, the planning comes from the architect who who would have otherwise worked for the builder or an architect who is perhaps better than those who work for the builder the uh, execution the quality of construction that is maintained comes from a contractor who gives better quality of construction than what a builder would give and would guarantee a class quality of construction the uh, uh, the whole project will go on time because it is controlled by the residents no power of attorney is given to anybody so the society is in total control and in possession of the land you don't have to give any possession 
to any builder even after you leave the place and the last point is that uh, you don't have to give any irrevocable power of attorney to anybody because there is no power of attorney to be given and irrevocable consent is also not required because the members are giving consent to their society and uh, the society takes the consent and the consent is given through a general body meeting so uh, in the self free development scheme you get more area than what any builder can offer you get more uh, 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 better quality construction you can uh, get better quality planning you can get faster construction and you can get more corpus than what any builder can offer so in all respects it is of less risk and it is much safer uh, to go for self redevelopment as opposed to the builders redevelopment scheme this is uh, by far what i tell people i have shortened my speech it normally takes me an hour hour and a half sometimes even 2 hours is to explain these things but for you i made it very brief so that uh, those of you who want to see those detailed speeches i have sent those speeches on youtube now if you have any questions i will reply to them and after seeing those speeches if you still have questions i will be there to reply to those questions another thing is this service that i am giving to the society for self free development is a pro bono free of cost service to guide you for self free development there is no charges on my side there is no fees on my side there is no above the table under the table expectation from my side this is absolutely without any expectations from any cooperative housing society and uh, i have been doing this not for you but for any cooperative housing society which leaves the builders model and opts for self free development model i am not going to do this uh, uh, you know giving so much time to societies forever this is a model which i had uh, devised this is a model which is connected with my name so i want to do about 100 cooperative housing societies in different parts of the state already in nagpur three societies are going for self development in pune 17 societies are going for uh, self free development in nasik two societies have, are going for self free development so we want this to happen everywhere and once i have done 100 or 150 societies then i will no more spend so much time then the societies which have already done self free development will guide the other societies and this movement will then continue from one society to the other that is the thing. the the bottom line is that for between now and the date on which your building your new building is complete and you get possession and occupation certificate till that day whatever hand holding needs to be done from my side will be done i shall uh, educate your members into whatever needs to be explained to you and all this service is completely pro bono completely free of cost without any kind of financial burden on any members of the cooperative housing society with this introduction now uh, i would like Uh, 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 your members to ask any questions. 